could be a cat. Ooh, get out of here. All right, guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be working on some uh, Fairburn Applegate knife fighting. I know everyone's always curious about knife fighting these days. It seems like this type of self-defense work is actually honestly more um, applicable than ever before, stateside at least. So it's really good to train uh, knife fighting. Now, is there ever situations stateside for civilians or even fucking cops or military for that matter where you're both going to be pulling out knives and dueling? Is there? Maybe. No. Usually not, unless you're in like a Michael Jackson gang knife fight where you tie both wrists together and you're dueling it. Have you ever seen that one? No, but they like things like to carry machetes. Well, that's like way different than we're talking okay. about. That's MS-13, yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. If you run into those guys, just start shooting and run away because <laughs> you ain't got no hope for 13, 14 of those guys. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about is legit um, knife fighting. Now, this was a concern for obviously who OSS operatives back in the day. Uh, not so much knife fighting, but more like knife survival because mm. all the guys I've ever studied with for knife fighting will always say the same thing. Men who know a little bit more about blades than I do and then men even going back in the day like uh, Colonel Applegate, Colonel Fairburn, guys who had been in knife fights. Fairburn had knife scars literally all over his body from taking away knives and whatnot when he was a cop in the Shanghai Municipal Police. So he knew about this stuff. Obviously, he taught Applegate this stuff. And Applegate really kind of let us all know about this stuff. He wrote about it later on, and then he put the doctrine out even more so than Mr. William Fairburn did. Um, now we're continuing this legacy. We're, as Bill Wolf says, walking in the footsteps of heroes. But more back to my point. Is there ever a time where you're both going to pull out blades and duel no, probably not, but knowing this stuff could save your life. That way, just in case somebody does pull out a tactical knife and, you know, for whatever reason, want to show it to you, that's his first mistake. And his second mistake will be picking on you because now you know some knife fighting secrets from World War II combatants. And this would be important because obviously uh, knives were a tertiary weapon. Secondary or tertiary right, you had your rifle, you had your M14, you had your Mauser, I'm sorry, M1 Garand, you had your Mauser if you were a German, and then perhaps you could get your hand on a pistol, maybe if you were an officer, but generally more like it, you would have a bayonet or just a dagger or a knife, right? So these guys need to know how to be, uh, needed to know how to be dealing with knives. What we're gonna be doing today is a very simple defang the snake or knife disarm drill with another knife. One guy pulls out a knife, you, oh shit, let me get my knife, cut his wrist, and then do away with him real quick. A lot of this stuff is very simple stuff. It's not, as you know, it's not hardcore, you know, grab him, twist his arm, throw him over your shoulder, all that. <laughs> it's more just cut him and get away. So that's what we're gonna be doing. But there's a little bit of footwork with this, guys, and you, y'all know I'm not a stickler on footwork. I think if you can execute these techniques, that should be good enough. But I've noticed that a lot of new students, when learning this stuff, what they really get hung up on is not the technique, not the knife stuff, it's the footwork. And the footwork can honestly make or break you. And if you have it boxed, then this could be a, just a little bit counterintuitive. So what we're gonna start as a warm up is a basic boxing box drill. It's called the box drill and it comes from Muay Thai, it comes from boxing. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna stand in our orthodox boxing stance. Now, let's reiterate this, Jen, for all the guys and girls out there. How does this look like? Left foot forward, right foot slightly back, shoulder length apart, shoulder width apart, right? We're nice and stable. We're springy on our knees, we're bouncing on them, right? We can spring off our rear foot to advance forward right like that but remember we're always keeping our feet shoulder width apart because if they're too close together whoa we tip right over right exactly so feet shoulder width apart if we're springing forward we're springing off our left foot like a spring and we still stay shoulder width apart and if we're going to go backwards we spring off our lead foot and we step back exactly but remember guys feet shoulder width apart. I can't stress enough how important it is to keep your feet shoulder width apart. 
if we want to go to the side, what foot are we going to move with first? The leading one? The lead foot, so the left foot. If we're going left, our left foot leads to the left, and we step, keeping what? Our knees bent. And? And it's shoulder width apart. Shoulder width apart. Now, if we want to go right, where are we going to go? Exactly, and the feet stay shoulder width apart. So what we're going to be doing is literally just creating a box. If you guys have ever done box dancing or ballroom dancing, it's actually very similar. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go and we're going to keep our feet shoulder width apart. Elbows tucked. Chin tucked. Fists glued to our cheeks. Chin slightly down. Eyes pointed towards the enemy. Where are we looking on the enemy? We're not looking in his eyes to intimidate him. We're not looking at his feet. We're not looking at his hands necessarily. We're looking dead center in the sternum. Because if we're looking in the sternum, we can see everything his feet and his arms are doing, and that's all the stuff that's gonna hurt us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go forward, spring off our left foot, forward. And we're staying shoulder width apart. Then we're gonna go to the right. So on three, one, two, three, go right. Then we're gonna go back. One, two, three, go back. Good. Then one, two, three, we're gonna go left, left. Then we're going to go forward, right, back, left, forward, right, back, left, and forward, and recover. All right, so that's the basic box drill. We're going to do that for a minute, two, three minutes. We're going to get warmed up. We're going to get all the lubrication going on our joints, get a little loose, and we're going to be really practicing our footwork. All right, so this is going to come in. Really important and handy later on while we do this. So when we start talking about how to train with knives, obviously training knives are great. If you want to drop money on a small folding knife that's a trainer, that, would, that is what I would recommend because we train like we fight, we fight like we train. So we always want to be training with something similar in size and weight and shape to what we're actually going to be carrying. And if you're, most, if you're like most guys, you're not carrying a dagger. You're not carrying a knife that's this big. You're not carrying one of those crazy looking like training knives that everyone has that's the rubber. It looks like a toy pirate knife, right? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. We're not carrying those generally. I don't carry that. I don't carry a knife and a scabbard, but I always have a small folding knife on me. So if you want to invest your money into a small training knife like that, or two even better, that would be ideal. But most of us aren't going to go and spend that money because they are relatively expensive. You could be spending anywhere upwards of 30 to 50 bucks on a fucking training knife. And it's like, okay, well, you know what I found? I found this like top to an oven uh, iron, cast yeah. iron pan. It's a protector for your hands. And uh, this is actually similar in size and length to this uh, folding knife, right? Not ideal, but it's similar because... If we pull out a butter knife, okay, that's great, but then we're working with something that's a little bit long. We get used to the length on it. Mm. We get used to the way it feels. And then when we go to the folding knife and we have to actually do this, mm. that you know inch or two yeah. is, is enough to make or break things. So we wanna stay similar. So mm. she's gonna be using this and she's gonna be demonstrating our stance with the knife. Now, this is the official kind of Applegate stance and this has been used kind of doctrinally I know in the Canadian Armed Forces, in the Marine Corps, it was taught for a while, a little bit different. I don't know, guys, if it's still taught like this, but for a while, they were going like this, right? And they would hide the blade with their left hand and keep it slightly back. Okay, that's fine, but there's better ways to do it, right? Uh, so what we're going to be talking about is the way that I was taught and the way that I believe they used to teach it quite frequently back in the day. And this is, to be honest, one of the more effective ways of having your stance set up when it comes to fighting with a bladed weapon. Mm -hmm. What we're going to be doing, we're going to take an orthodox boxing stance. Mm -hmm. Now notice, guys, how most of this stuff is set up from an orthodox boxing stance. Chin slightly tucked, elbow in, fist glued to the chin, left foot slightly forward, right foot slightly back, shoulder width apart, mm -hmm. okay? Now, why is her hand up here? It's here to protect her. If we're gonna get cut, we wanna get cut on the top of our forearm, forearm correct. 
good anatomy. <laughs> we want to get cut on the top of our forearm. Now, we don't want to get cut at all, but when it comes to dealing with edged weapons, you're probably going to get cut. I hate to break it to you. So we're keeping it up here and we're protecting our vitals. We're protecting our neck, our carotid arteries, our throat. We're even kind of protecting our eyes a little bit. And it's the same type of deal as if someone's punching at us in boxing, we can cover up, right? So if they're slashing up here, we cover up here. And then obviously we're ready for them to slash and stab down here. We can also come down here and protect. But we need this facing the enemy because if he can cut us in here on the wrist, then we're gonna bleed out. We got arteries going all up and down here. We got arteries in here. We got the armpit here, which is a great area to stab. We got, I believe it's the liver on the left and the kidneys on the right. I believe that's correct. And we don't want anybody getting in on our vital areas. And then obviously we've got the whole stomach area exposed as well. So if we're coming here and protecting all of this as best we can, that's ideal. The knife is gonna be held back Similar to the way that we would hold a pistol if we were doing close quarters combat or close quarters battle, right? Always back here. And again, you lean back slightly, you point it down towards the pe pelvic girdle. Bang, 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 bang. Why do we point our weapon towards the pelvic girdle? Because shots down here are more effective at dropping our opponent than anywhere else. Uh, but that's neither here nor there, but we're adopting a very similar knife fighting stance. So it's here. Obviously, we want this back because if it was out here, our opponent could slash at our wrist. So we wanna make ourselves as least available as a target as possible at all times. Now the leg, yes, you might be thinking about this. Well, your leg's a little bit too forward. Yeah, it is. I want them slightly back. I want more of a squared off stance. I don't wanna put anything out there for them to cut because as soon as they see anything available, you better believe they're gonna to try to cut at it. So that's our stance. Okay, Jen, demonstrate the stance. Good, now where's the knife? There, back there, perfect. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is defanging the snake. So the way that I like to drill this is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the knife in my pocket. And again, I'm using a butter knife because I want her stimulus and response to be at the cold steel. I don't want this as, we could use this thing, right? But Who's ever gonna pull out this and need to get their arm cut? And if you're doing that, you're a fucking psycho. So I want her stimulus and response to be, cold steel comes out of my pocket and she slashes at that shit right away. That's her CNR, condition response, right? So what you're gonna do is I need you to go over here, perfect. Now what I want her to do is there's a number of ways that we can drill this, right? So a lot of the ways you're gonna see is like a C, a tight C, and they step off. A C, a tight C, and they step off, right? But with her, I really want her just to get the crude mo uh, motor skills down. Gross motor skills is the name of the game. So instead of worrying about this tight C pattern, we can always train that later. But for now, I want her just to slash as hard as she can at the arm. That way, even if she gets up here, it doesn't really matter. Chances are she's going to get kind of up here and then a little bit down on the wrist. But if she's chopping at that son of a bitch the best that she can, number one, as soon as her heart starts pumping, she gets tunnel vision going on, nothing seems to be going right. All she can remember to do is chop as hard as she can and move. That's all I need her to be able to do, all right? So that's all she's gonna do. As soon as she sees this come out and come at her, she's gonna chop as hard as she can and step off. Now, notice, come over here so these guys can see, Notice her footwork. She doesn't want to go this way, into me, right? Because what happens if she go back, recover? All right, so she comes here and I can still get her. I still stab her, right? But notice now she goes to the outside of my arm and boom. Now I'm still gonna try to cut her, right? But she can move, move back, move back, move back. No, 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 back, back, oh. yeah. So footwork is incredibly important here, guys, and she's gonna demonstrate with me real quick, and we're gonna then teach her from there, right? So, uh, actually, let's change positions. Perfect, so put that in your pocket. My, my fake pockets. Oh, fake pockets, all right. So she pulls it out. I'm in my stance, right? Oh, shit, oh. and I move off. Now, I'm to the outside. She's obviously going to try and slash at my stomach now, right? Or my throat. I can move back. Then I can chop more, right? So I hope you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. So one more time. 
and I move up and I move back and I literally just keep chopping at whatever's coming at me. So one more time. Oh shit. And I move and I slash and I slash and I'm Keep going off camera, but I literally am just slashing like crazy at anything coming at me. And eventually, hopefully, that will start to soften her up enough to where I can go on the offensive as well. Hmm. So here you go. And all I want you to do is worry about your footwork. We're going to go here. Okay. And I want you to, all you worry about is getting to this side. Okay. And if you can think about going and looking at my elbow here, uh -huh. that's what I want you to do. Yeah, and you're good. And then I'm gonna come here and just keep chopping at it and chopping at it. And that's all I want you guys to focus on. If you have a partner, great. If not, you can train this kata style in the air and just think about this, cut and move. Yeah. All right, and your footwork is incredibly important here, guys. Yeah. It really so you're is. Trip, right? yeah. yeah, you're gonna cross up, you're gonna treat, mm -hmm. or your, your opponent's gonna push you or some shit yeah, like that. if you walk, because that's what I was doing before, is like walking and then. Yeah, before she was doing this and then kind of stepping off and walking. and it, it, You don't want to get used to that. You really want to get that footwork down. So it's the same concept as if we're slipping a punch, right? And then we step to the side and we come here one, two, right? So that's like a boxing thing, but the footwork is the same as boxing. That's what makes this stuff so effective. You study boxing for a couple of months, you study a little wrestling, and boom, as soon as you put a knife in your hand, you're a boxer with a knife. Mm. That's all it is. You're boxing with a knife. Yeah. All right, so all I want you to think about doing is stepping, and I just want you to step. Go. That's perfect. Okay. Now the knife comes out. Cut and step. There you go. Cut and step. Oh, there you see, I moved with the other one. Cut and step. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. Then what I want you to do exactly is stab into the liver here. Mm -hmm. Kidneys, yeah. <laughs> when you stab into the kidneys, uh, what happens is your body's going to typically go into some type of shock, compensated mm -hmm. shock, I believe they call it, eventually decompensated shock. But uh, you really want to start looking for those vital targets. So what I'm doing here is I'm really ideally wanting to train you guys and her to uh, Conditioned, uh, conditioned response, mm -hmm. and so the condition knife, ah! <laughs> cut, <laughs> move, cut, move, and then kidneys. Uh. Oh, boom! Now, when you go for the kidneys, it's important to kind of, you know, obviously when it comes down to it, guys, we're just gonna, we're just gonna stick it, right? We're yeah. gonna stick it. But I would, what I would really like to get you kind of on the path of doing is sticking it in the right way. So when we step. When we stick somebody, we want to put as much body weight and centrifugal force into it as possible. So we're stepping in with that lead foot and we're coming and we're stepping in with the rear foot. We're getting it and then we're retracting it and getting the fuck out of there. Mm. Boom, and we come back, right? Mm. I mean, obviously, ideally we would come in, attack, come in, attack more. Uh, but mm. right now, all I want you to worry about doing is sticking him and getting the fuck away. Yeah. Cut, move, yeah, cut, move, stick, good, good. So we're gonna do this twice more, and obviously we'll do a lot of repetitions of this as we go on privately, but just for the sake of the camera, I really want you guys to get the, the picture that I'm working with down. So, knife comes out, cut, move, stab. There you go, one more time. You see the knife cut, move, stab. One more time, all right? Knife, cut, move, stab. There you go. So all it's, all it's gonna be, if you're training this on your own, it's gonna be here, all right? You're gonna cut as hard as you can. Just chop that son of a bitch, cut and move, all right? Then cut some more, then stab, then get out of there. Now, again, stabbing and getting out of there, is it better to just keep stabbing? Probably, you gotta realize they have a knife too in this context, so, do you want to, you know, stab, push him away, get some distance, maybe let him bleed a little bit? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to stab, grab, stab, and move? I mean, that's a little bit more advanced, right? Mm -hmm. So to stab, and stab some more, and go into a vital area, come back again more, it's, it's just practice, and all that mm -hmm. takes is looking into it, researching it, uh, and then programming it 
into your muscle memory. But for this context, knife, cut, move, stab. Knife, cut, <laughs> move, stab. And notice how we're working in this apartment, guys. It's a confined space. A lot of the times when you find yourself involved in this as a civilian, you're gonna be at a confined space. You're not gonna have a lot of space to move. It's not gonna be an open battlefield, right? Mm -hmm. Even in a military context, you go into a small room, somebody grabs a hold of you, oh shit, you know, maybe I, I don't have my sidearm with me or my sidearm is not available. Maybe they pin my rifle to my chest. All I have is that knife on my plate carrier. I need to cut, make some space, move away, access my sidearm, boom, 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 right? And then again, down into the pelvic girdle, boom, 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 exactly. So um, it really is important to kind of really work with confined, closed spaces like this, whereas we have maybe six feet, yeah. right, of, of clearance here, and if we're gonna be getting into it, right, I'm gonna come here, maybe I've got her by the throat, I pull out a knife, and she's got her, and she cuts and moves and stabs. Right, exactly. So try to do that one more time, but I want a little more aggression. I don't want this. Okay. She's so nice. She I can't don't even, like to be aggressive. She, no, but we're trying to make her aggressive, all right? Because, all right. Knife! Cut, move, stab! All right, good. And we're gonna call it good at that. And we're gonna be training more. Hopefully we'll put some videos together for you guys and show you how Jen's progressing in her Applegate knife fighting stuff. And we're also gonna do some disarms later on. I'm not a big fan of knife disarms, to be honest with you, because they're, they're so low percentage. I mean, mm -hmm. to be honest, like mm -hmm. there's stuff you can do, like if you slowly stab at me, pinning the elbow back, mm -hmm. right? That's always a good uh, tactic and then distracting moving off, but you know, it's just so dependent, but it's better to have something than nothing. Right. So we will go over some things. Uh, if you guys want to check out my other videos that I've done, I did uh, counter against the prison knife style stab. Uh, and I think I've done a couple other knife. I've done uh, an old Fairburn over the head psycho ice pick style defense, but you can check those out uh, here on the Go To Fighting Secrets YouTube channel. But for now, that was what we wanted to go over is just make sure that you've got your stance down, right? Then the knife comes out, you slash and move and stab. Mm. Slash, move, stab. Slash, move, stab. Slash, move, stab. And it's the same thing in boxing, whereas if we put down the knife, now we're boxing, right? And maybe she throws this hand at my face, but I'm able to slip it and I move and then boom, boom, <laughs> right? And that's the same principle we're working on. So I'm going to throw a left at you and you're gonna slip out of the way, then move your footwork to my side, then boom, boom, right? And we're gonna be working on her boxing as well. I appreciate you watching, guys. Until next time, please remember. Don't be scared, be prepared. And that you were your first and the last line of defense and we, <laughs> We'll see you in the next video.